Thank you, Bruce, for that enthusiastic introduction. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. I love this song. I love Christmas. I love it even more when I've had a good year and I can afford all those Christmas presents. <laughs> it is so much better when I don't have to go out on credit cards to pay for Christmas. So I had a good year this year. It doesn't always happen that way, but this year worked out well. What do you guys love about Christmas? Do you have any rituals that you enjoy that add meaning to the season? Does anyone put up a tree here? Does anyone put up decorations on the tree? Let me see a show of hands. Who puts up a Christmas tree over here? Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five out of about, okay, so about half of us put up a Christmas, uh, oh, you even put up a Christmas tree. Cool. I put a lot of effort into going and picking out the best tree, and I invite my family, and if I get there late, they have already chosen the best tree on the entire lot, and then I have to bless their decision. And it ends up being a very tall tree, and it was 12 feet tall. You have to have a lot of good back muscles to put on, I think it was like 700 lights. On It took me three hours, but I've gotten really good at getting a step ladder so I can get close to it so I don't have to bend over quite so much. Why do you spend all that effort to put up a tree? I will get to the answer to that question later. Does anyone put lights up on the outside of their house? Who puts lights up on the outside of their house? Just, just me? Just one other person? Two of us go and put lights up. When you're giving presents, do any of you actually purchase presents for other people? Let me see. If, okay, so how many of us go out? All right, now do you wrap your presents? Do you wrap your own presents? I wrap, I actually have little I kids. Right. So I can give the, the kids stuff to wrap, but they end up being wrapped. Do any of you go Christmas carol? Do you go out and look at other people's lights? Any hands? I like other Yes, I like other people's lights too. We get a big van and we drive around and we go on over to look at these Christmas lights at a place that's, that's over in Santee. And it is absolutely fantastic. And we do it every year. And we have 15, well there's 12 of us in the car, so we have about 12 conversations going on at all the same time. Everyone's wanting to be dominant and at the, the center of attention. So this year we got wise. We parked the car. We had to park about half a mile away because it's so popular. And we walked all the way around Christmas Circle, and it was fantastic. And it was freezing cold, so it reminded you that even in San Diego, you can have Christmas because it was cold. So why do we do these things? I would say that they, when you make extra effort, at doing these things it provides meaning to the experience. The ritual in and of itself is made more meaningful when you spend more time doing it. And that was a big insight to me because I buy stuff for myself, I buy stuff for my wife, I buy stuff for my children all year long but I never wrap it. So what's the point of wrapping it? To make it special, to do something different than what we normally do. And when I first started this off and talked about joy, that's what this effort does. It brings joy to me because I'm participating. And the more effort I put into something, the more I get out of it. It's no different than Toastmasters. If you guys put effort into becoming better speakers, if you come here and you speak, if you don't hide, you become better speakers. You, you have some meaning. You, you have self-improvement. It's something that you enjoy. It's something that you get better at. And each of us has a job. And when we put effort into our jobs, that's the meaning we bring to our lives. Bruce here wants to be able to give people the best service that comes to his supermarket and not have homeless people inside messing up in the, in the aisles and have fresh fruit and that type of stuff. So he makes sure that it's a hospital experience. Larry doesn't like people having cavities. He encourages them to use toothpaste and toothbrushes and mouthwash and basically puts himself out of business preventing all those cavities <laughs> from coming back so that he can make more money extracting tooth but he does an excellent job of it because that's how he puts meaning into his life. 
John is in the military. He's saving us from being bombed by North Korea. Well, he's doing a good job of that. We haven't been bombed by North Korea yet. Bob used to sell air conditioning. For him, the, being the best air conditioner salesman in town and being able to make a living and have a fancy car was, was how he derived meaning. He derived meaning from work. And that is also what Jesus did. Jesus came down, and before Jesus came down and sacrificed himself on the cross to us, only the, you know, the Jews were allowed to go to heaven. But after Jesus crucified himself, then the rest of us, through good works and faith and we could actually find a path to find a place in heaven. And all of a sudden, our lives became more meaningful. We could live according to the Ten Commandments. We could actually end up in heaven someday. And that gives you more reason to do the right thing every day. So that's the joy that he's brought to my life and the joy that I try and bring to the lives of my children. And that's why I practice singing in front of you guys so that next year I can do a better job of it. So what else do we have as rituals? One ritual that we used to have was Christmas cards. And we all used to have Christmas cards before Facebook convinced us that we didn't need to do it anymore. But I still do it. And so I'm going to share with you my Christmas card. I know I'm supposed to mail them out, but I figured I would go ahead <laughs> and save the postage and just hand them out to you. And then because they're a poem, they don't make any sense unless I explain them to you. So I will then read them and explain to you what they mean. And you can keep this for posterity someday, or use it for a paper airplane, or whatever else you want to do. But this is part of how I try and make the Christmas season meaningful for me and my family, because we then take a nice little Christmas picture, and we hang this up on the wall. And it's sort of cool that their father knows enough about them to write a couple verses that might make some sense. So let me go through this with you. Merry San Diego Christmas from the Weiss clan that has nothing to do with the KKK. 2018. Although we Wyatt Harder inspires adulation, his fussy imperatives transcend mere lactation. Jessica's torpid slumber appends two hour sessions. That means she only gets two hours of sleep at a time. So Barb's sportive photo shoots are a welcome digression. Barb loves to go and take photo shoots of my little grandson, Wyatt. And that's where Kiefer is, by the way, he's taking care of my new grandson. To a sheer test hammer, Jared adds a hydraulic brake. He's over at San Diego State University and just graduated as an engineer. So that's sort of cool. Affixing a solenoid, his partners choose to flake. They didn't help him at all in a senior project. Jesse posts pics of Missy, that's a dog, while Jared trains Molly, that's another dog. We have seven of them in our family, more than children. And waiting on medical school, she taps imminent jolly. Now that's sort of facetious because she's depressed and anxious about whether she's going to get into medical school. And Jesse is Jared's girlfriend, who is now engaged to her. So that's sort of neat. That happened this year. Mary Raccoon and Forest Bear took off in Phil's plane. That's their pet names for each other, which is sort of funny, but I like it. They toured the Alamo Mission, Frontier King Crockett's Bay. In Roswell, they viewed the wreck of an alien ship. Really, guys, they have alien ships all over Roswell, you know. And the Grand Canyon was the peak of their latest road trip. As a vet intern, Caitlin sterilizes Swiss cats. <laughs> she actually spent time in Switzerland. She hasn't gotten her vet license, and they allowed her to sterilize cats. It was really fun for her. It's better than biology class. <laughs> <laughs> to get married to Michael, who she's actually married to civilly, she battled bureaucrats. They don't like people from Switzerland marrying American women. In 14 months, we planned the Catholic ceremony with a gospel choir for harmonic testimony. That's very expensive and may not happen, but that was their goal. As a part-time barista at Better Buzz Coffee, Laura concocts <laughs> cappuccinos and mocha latte. She won the Wellesley Award in her high school. Next, she wants admission. As a senior assassin, assassin she shoots with contrition. They actually have senior assassin game over at the high school, and you walk around with water pistols, and you shoot people, and you try and win $1,000 if you're the only one who's left alive at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. 
It's sort of fun. That's all she does now instead of studying, but that's a different story. Yeah, tell me about it. All right. Reagan has embraced her as inner vegetarian. That's my youngest son, Reagan. When debating Kiefer, he is the contrarian. He loves to argue. He's going to be a lawyer someday, hopefully, so he can get paid for this. He blasts evil villains in games like Path of Exile and studies British monarchs as a devoted Anglophile. Under Barb's ardent guidance, our dog kennels flourish and still finds the energy for 13 mouths to nourish every Sunday. With Michelle at Canyon Ranch, she passed judgment on kimchi. Now, what that means is she's allergic to kimchi and she had it at Canyon Ranch and she spent most of her time in the bathroom, similar to some other people at this table who go back and forth quite often. But I thought it was sort of funny to say passing judgment. Well, is that, that's me being totally transparent right now. Uh, Hydroid. <laughs> Eric's new fitness hobby is running half marathons. His Toastmaster speeches are to the right of Genghis Khan's. I think you guys can attest to that. We should close this year on a $19 million sale, which actually happened Christmas Eve, made my whole year. Hunting hefty commissions is still his holy grail. To all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, keep a lookout for Santa and his enslaved reindeer. Yes, that's uh, one of my, Reagan's comments, is how we've enslaved his reindeer. Don't give him any, any pet rights. Okay, I would like to pass these around. These are some pictures of my family, and this is a picture of more pictures of my family, and you can see just how, how big my family group is. And I would encourage you guys to try and do the same thing that I did next year and have a Christmas card. And maybe you all did have Christmas cards, but if you did, don't forget to put me on the list because I don't recall getting any Christmas cards from any of you, and I felt very disappointed, which is what prompted me to bring all of these and share them with you because I want you to know that all of you are my friends. Tell us. <laughs>